Hey everyone, welcome to Connected. I'm your host, Liz Lovegood. I wanted to come through to you today with the message that I received while channeling the Galactic Federation of Light or members of the Federation. I had something that was bothering me, so I asked a question, you know, on a couple, actually a couple of different topics, but instead of just letting a message come through, I wanted to talk about the collective. I was having a hard time, as many of you, you know, when you learn new information, you know, I try to help people sit with it and think about it and see if it resonates with you. I've had an issue with the collective for a long time now. I get the basic understanding of how it's presented to us that the collective consciousness, the human collective, is the way they kind of describe it is almost like we're all connected and we can all tap into this one source of consciousness, the collective. How some people have explained it to me too is almost like, you know, in the animal world, you see birds communicating, birds of a feather flock together. They're going as one, you know, one being. And other animals communicate in similar ways. So I get that, totally get that. But I didn't feel like I was a part of the collective. I didn't feel like I was a part of the collective in the same manner. So I needed some, I, you know, some background on this, like what exactly is the collective and is it what we've been explained or what we've been shown it to be in this way where we're all just one collective and we can all tap into the same information. Okay. So this might resonate with some of you. It might not. I didn't feel like I was a part of the collective because I don't fully believe in the way the collective has been described to us. I know that there are different beings on this planet existing in different forms, and this has changed too in recent years, but <laughs> not everybody is entirely human. So <laughs> it's, it's weird. So I asked and I was just trying to figure out, like, especially when you start learning more about the different beings that seeded us on the planet and then you have all different theories, but you start believing in what makes sense to you and what feels right to you. So there are some theories that we were seeded by different races of alien beings in the past around Atlantean times. It wasn't that humans didn't exist prior, they did, but they added a, another chromosome or they added something to our DNA so that we would have the soul factor or that connection to them, the spark, you know. But then there's also that idea where there was an issue with humanity being taken over by darker forces, the Anunnaki, the reptilians that wanted to use humans as slaves and keep us all under their control. So at that point, when you start doing some research into this again, you know, just believe what you feel. But at, some, at this point where we were being taken over by apparently these darker beings, a call went out into the universe for help for the humans. Because the humans, that wasn't what was supposed to happen. You know, we have our biblical stories and our different types of mythologies about existing in this beautiful world, Eden, or wherever it may be, depending on your belief systems. And that's exactly what it was supposed to be. So we were all sort of shaken up as humans and taken advantage of. And those darker entities, they gained control enough where they messed with our crystalline grid. And you may have heard this in different ways. And then this way, the good galactic beings that seeded us originally, they couldn't come back. And there are different theories on this too. There are theories that after they left, they had left some of their beings behind to be reborn into humanity. But call went out to help humanity. So at that point, different galactic beings came together and asked for representatives to help the humans of Earth, to help them in a way that they could to fight back against these darker entities that controlled the planet. So because they were not allowed to come down and just start an intergalactic war on the planet because they were kept out because of the way that they messed with the energetic fields, they had to think creatively about how they could help humanity. 
So what they decided was they were going to send a certain amount of representatives who chose, because again, they you have to choose, they chose to be born into humanity on the planet. In that case, they sacrificed and they became a human, but they had to do this through birth. So their soul entered the human body and would reincarnate after as a human and go through the stages with the humans, live with the humans as a human. And just like humanity, when you're born, you don't remember after a certain point, you don't remember what your mission is. You're meant to grow spiritually enough to learn that throughout your cycles of reincarnation. So those that decided to come to help humanity and be born here as human souls sacrificed because they were upper level beings from other planets that had already achieved enlightenment. But they knew that their presence on this planet was what needed to help the humans ascend and break free from the Anunnaki, the reptilians, whatever you want to call them today, the elites, the people that control the world or the beings the entities that have controlled the world so once they were born here again the issue became they knew being born here that they were going to be cut off from their knowledge consciously of the multiverse and this is what i channeled i got the idea of the multiverse which is more than one universe so (laughs) how they described it is like the human experience and It's like having the shell of consciousness or the shell of the body containing the spark of the soul that has knowledge. Your soul has so much more knowledge than your conscious self can even handle because it's being blocked. And the way to unblock it is through enlightenment and moving forward and growing your frequency Basically, what you ended up with were what I'm going to refer to as hybrids. So you have human beings that are born and reincarnating on this planet, but have souls that existed on other planets in other times. And again, time is just a construct, but you, you know what I mean. So you have humans with human souls, but then humans with evolved souls that have been blocked in the same way by their shell of the conscious self or you know the body that's holding the soul on top of that you have just your other types of you know beings that have been here and in control like the reptilians and they exist in a different plane of existence but have to share a body or take over the body of a human they aren't born here and that's why you know if you watch my previous videos on demons the reptilians and the demons I I don't see a difference The way that they are described, the way that they act, the way that they behave, the way that they exist, everything is that I've learned is the same. So if that helps you understand how the reptilians work, that's how it works. So demons cannot be born. They have to enter the body and that's what the reptilians do. But you don't have to be worried about that because you have to be a certain type of a person to be the reptilian, a human that allows the reptilian in to take over but anyway so you can see that i'm confused as to how i'm supposed to be a part of this collective of all humans and we are all different there are all kinds of weird things and even just that's what makes us great as humanity is that we're all different regardless we're all unique in our own different ways so basically how it was described to me when i channeled was that we have the multiverse and there's one God consciousness, and underneath the God consciousness are the different levels of, let's say, dimensions or different planes of existence. And this is going to look different because there's all different universes. So how they described it to me was our knowledge that we receive is coming from a place that resonates with our frequency. So if your frequency is high enough to tap into the fifth dimension, the sixth dimension, the seventh dimension, all the way up, you're going to bring ideas down out of those dimensions, like picking and choosing different ideas. And consciously, we don't do this. It just comes to us. 
So it's through that subconscious breaking through because of enlightenment that we're able to connect to these higher level ideas. So on that note, the way they describe to me the human consciousness or how they call it the collective, it's not just one collective. It's the collective of earth. So how they described it was like, you know, we have the shell that holds our souls, that the collective is like the shell of the earth. It's all the knowledge that has been contained within the third dimension of our planet. They told me that the collective or the shell is also the veil. So once we can break through our shells, we drop the veil because the veil is the shell of the body, of the soul, of the consciousness. So our jobs is to break through the third dimensional human collective consciousness. So that information that we all have access to in the 3D on the earth planet. Now, why is this important? It's important because we get information from the collective, right? So if one person thinks something, it goes into the human collective for all of us to eventually think too, or to know, or to pull from, or to grab from. It's interesting because our thoughts aren't always our thoughts. It's what we're downloading from the collective. It's ideas that we're getting from each other or just from being tuned into the collective. So that's why throughout history, things were invented at the same time around the world. And that's because at certain times we were meant to know certain things that went into the collective and people that could understand it pulled it out of the collective to create it. And right now this is important because as we're changing dimensions, we're now becoming the creators that we're meant to be. So once we think something, we create it. So how they described this to me was, we have the 3D collective. Now the humans that exist in this planet, let's just go to the humans. The humans can access the 3D collective. This is throughout our history here on the planet. I'm not really talking about simply today because today is more complex because we're going through an advancement. We are going through an ascension. But in previous times, humans got their ideas from the collective and contributed to the collective. But because humanity was being controlled by these reptilians, again, whatever it is that you believe or the evil, Satan, darkness, demons, wherever you go, humanity was being controlled. Ideas that were put into the human 3D collective came a lot of these ideas came from these darker beings. So once they realized that they could shut out a lot of the good, you know, the good galactic beings that wanted to help us, they found ways to put harmful information into the collective. And you can see this in more recently, in more recent times, where people started to see how television was hypnotizing people or radio programs and programs the word program i'm going to watch my programs i'm going to use my controller it's all because certain things were meant to be given to us information at different times and once television came out and the radio it's just a place where we could relax and our subconscious was allowing information to come through so I'm just going to call them reptilians, but again, believe what you want to believe. And not all reptilians I've heard are bad. Some have changed and decided to go for the good side. But so I, you know, I understand if you have comments about this, everybody has a different understanding of what these beings are. I'm just going to say reptilians for the sake of just keeping it simple. So let's say they were reptilians that were controlling the planet. They would put ideas into the collective for not only for people to believe to be true, but to manifest. So humans have the natural ability to manifest and create. We are just told things that suppress that or make us manifest dark things. So death pain, suffering, all of that. So in this case, they would put whatever they wanted into the collective along with whatever the human collective had and the human collective was growing. So how to help them when they're being controlled? 
So when the call went out and different beings decided to come to Earth to be reborn, the way they described this to me was twofold. So the human collective, now we have not just humans, but we have what I'm going to call hybrids which are humans that have a soul of an upper level entity inside of them. So in one case, those upper level beings that are in human bodies, they are able to advance spiritually faster if they choose on this planet because their soul is already resonating at a higher frequency, if that makes sense. So once the soul is resonating at a certain frequency, like when you measure the aura and our energy fields around the body, the white light, that Christ consciousness that exists in your crown chakra and above the crown chakra is connected to spirit. And that's because it's a higher frequency. So if these beings naturally had higher frequencies, they were naturally tapping into higher levels of consciousness beyond the human consciousness. And that's why when something happened like that, where you had a human that was tapping into upper level ideas, that's why the reptilians would come to shut that down. You know, either shut the human down by making their life worse kill them. You have all kinds of things that have happened to people that have been connected throughout history because they were connected. I've learned through the channeling that the problem was is let's say once that individual, let's say in the 1400s, had an upper level idea because their frequency was bursting through their shell. So they were able to connect with a higher level. That's the problem. The frequency, the light was going through the shell. And let's say they were tapping into a fourth dimension idea or fifth dimension or sixth dimension idea. Once they had the idea, they would pull that idea, not knowingly, but once you have the idea, that idea now goes into the 3D. So that idea may not have been meant for the 3D human <laughs> consciousness that the reptilians wanted to control, but because you had upper level beings existing in human bodies, it was natural for them to just get these higher level ideas that they would naturally bring into the collective. So that's why they had to be shut down. But basically, at this point, humans, as they evolved, were able to do this as well, because as they were reaching enlightenment themselves, like let's say Jesus, he was able to tap into higher level ideas that weren't previously here a part of the 3D collective, but bring them here. And that is what really caused some problems with the reptilians. That's not what they wanted for control. They couldn't control anymore ideas that were coming in from other dimensions, upper level ideas that would help us with ascension. So what were they able to do? They spun these ideas to make them evil or to make them bad. Or if you had any of these thoughts, you were evil. So there's a lot of contradictions if you look at the Bible. Uh, Thou shall not suffer a witch to live, but then you have Corinthians with spiritual gifts. So what is it exactly? It's who you go to and it's for information and it's where it comes from. Your your heart chakra, does it come from love? Does it come from a higher level frequency? And that's why in the duality world of the 3D, you have good and bad, okay? So just because somebody came up with some sort of magical kind of idea, it didn't mean that they were evil. It could have meant they were enlightened and they were just grabbing ideas down from a higher dimension. So simply put, the human collective is a 3D collective of information meant for the third dimensional plane that we exist in. They explain that there are other levels of consciousness that we're able to tap into the higher our frequencies go. So if we can increase our frequencies, we can get ideas from other dimensions and pull them into our dimension. And if we do this as humans, we're bringing the ideas from those other dimensions into the third dimensional consciousness. This is good and bad. What they told me was, you know, as light workers and as beings that have the white light that we're supposed to shine and just get rid of all evil and darkness, 
they explained it to me that it's that our light has to break the shell of the entire 3D consciousness, which is the veil, <laughs> to just advance to the next level of existence, the next dimension. So enough of us have to be breaking through this 3D collective shell at the same time to dismantle the shell and just get rid of it. So whether you want to call that the matrix, you know, whatever it is that we're just getting rid of off from this planet so that we can break through and go to the fifth dimension, that's what we have to do with our light. So working on developing our higher level frequency and our spiritual paths and knowledge and meditation, we're all doing this and we're doing this at a rapid rate, way faster than they thought. Way faster than they, meaning other beings in the universe or multiverse even thought we could handle here on the planet. And we are able to do this now because of the shift. So before where people were being shut down, there's just too many of us that good has outweighed evil and the shift has occurred and now the planet is ascending into the 5D and the people that are ascending with it are going to stay here on this planet in the 5D. And like I've said in other videos, that we are separating. And it doesn't mean death at all. It just means we're going to be in different places. And everything's going to be fine. It's nothing to be afraid of. Not even for loss, because loss exists in a different way. So don't worry about this. We're all going to be where we need to be, where our soul chooses to be. So... They said basically that the collective consciousness that as we know it is only the human consciousness until it isn't. So it's really just a choice for us. So this human consciousness as we know it of the 3D realm isn't going to be existing here on this planet anymore. And it could look different on the new planet of the 3D duality that people are choosing to go to. But basically just the idea that the reason why we've gotten upper level ideas in the past is mainly because of these hybrid beings, humans with souls that from people that have evolved, that were able to bring ideas from other dimensions into the third dimensional human consciousness. <laughs> Oh, and the way they described it to me too is it's not just the third dimensional shell or veil. It's also the body isn't what really holds the soul in. It's what we exist in, yes, in the third dimension, but we're bringing the body with us to the fifth dimension. It's the ego, which is the shell that protects and not protects us, but the, the ego actually constrains our ability to contact our soul self. So it's in breaking down the ego, and it's not just ego like the way that you think about ego, it's the psychological stage of the ego and how we learn information. Breaking that down and changing our paradigms of thought and the ways that we act is what will help again with the soul's immersion from the body and the ascension process. And we know this too because with the stages of human development, when you're born from the ages of one to about two, you exist in the id stage, which is their survival stage, but it has to be the survival stage because the soul comes and goes from the body a lot of the time and that's because you have until about the age of two to decide whether or not you want to stay in this body in this life that you chose a soul contract for so once you choose to be a part of this 3d planet and this 3d collective in the past your ego set in because you made that choice. And that's why kids at the age of two, they can see spirits usually or communicate with souls that exist on the other side or babies can see them. But once the ego sets in, that's when they start learning about the world and what the world is and what are they learning? Information from the 3D collective that has been shelled off from the other dimensions. So they're learning this is true, that is true, this isn't true, this isn't true. And they're getting this information from all the people in their life. So they're being programmed to believe certain things as a human being. But it's the soul through reincarnation that has to burst through 
the ego, the shell, the veil, in order to break the system down so that we can advance spiritually. And in the past, people have been able to do this through their own form and to achieve enlightenment as human beings. And that's why we have members of the Galactic Federation of Light that have achieved enlightenment as human souls. But they were doing that individually and they were able to do it individually on their own. Now we're doing it collectively as a planet. So the bad part about this is, and this isn't bad for those of us that are ascending because we're doing it so much faster because of this. Because we are breaking down the human consciousness, the third dimensional consciousness, as we are ascending, we are just pulling all kinds of information from the upper level dimensions into this 3D human collective consciousness. And that means that the 3D humans that want to remain in the 3D are going to have a hard time thinking about ideas that are in the 3D collective. So this is another reason why we have to separate sooner because the more of us that are ascending at a rapid rate, we're getting information and because we are still in the human body, we are pulling that information into the human collective. So yes, we are a part of the human collective, but as you ascend, whether that means that you have a human soul or a soul from another planet, as you ascend, you have a foothold in other dimensions depending on your frequency. So you are like split and that's why I like the idea of the hybrid. Whatever information you get from this dimension is now coming into the 3D dimension and the reptilians are not the only ones controlling the information anymore in the 3D human collective. But again, the 3D human collective their soul may not be able to handle certain things coming out. Yes, they will shut it down, like cognitive dissonance, or they'll be able to just hear the information and let it go because that's not reality for them. But this can't continue to happen much longer because on our plane of existence, we are breaking the veil. We are breaking the shell. We are above and beyond the 3D human collective consciousness. Yes, we are a part of it because we are existing in the 3D right now, but we are beyond it when we are pulling ideas and information from other realms. And I want to give you an example of this too. A while back, when I first started listening to other channelers, you know, because prior to this, I always knew that aliens existed for other reasons, but I wasn't so much sold on the idea of how much we are connected until more recently, in recent years. And as much as Cryon has changed and everybody has their own belief systems about this, once he merged fully with Lee Carroll, a lot of people have different feelings about Cryon as a channeler. To each his own. All I have to say is, Cryon was the being that helped me move forward with my channeling, with my beliefs about channeling and discernment and being able to contact positive upper level beings and being comfortable enough to do it and not afraid to do it. Where prior to that, I had experienced a lot of darkness in regards to, if you watch some of my other videos, I know a lot about demonology because I grew up in homes with demons or around haunted houses and things like that. So I know now that I was afraid to channel because I didn't know how to use my discernment or my feelings about it to know what was coming through on the other side. Now I know. But what's interesting about Cryon is he said that he can't relay information to us until a human, and now this is human in body, a human that's alive on this planet in this moment or in this now existence, until a human has that idea. They've pulled the idea out of a collective with their frequency and they've brought it into the 3D human collective. So then Cryon can bring it through because it's information that another human had already gotten and he's all of a sudden been given the okay to talk about certain subjects. So what was interesting to me about this and one of the reasons why I started trusting Cryon was because when I first started listening to his channeling sessions, 
one of the things that I was getting before Cryon, one of the things that I just innately knew, two of the things, was that we weren't going to have to die and that humans could reincarnate within the body. But once I started listening to Cryon, he had relayed that in his channels. So I began an element of trust and listening and not just trust, but again, you have to feel because not everything that Cryon has said has resonated with me or even maybe it's not meant to yet, but certain things were and it made me feel so much better about stuff I was thinking because I thought I was crazy. But once you hear somebody else that's channeling information that you also got from you know, tapping into a higher dimension, it brings you a level of comfort, you know, like, oh my God, that is true, or that must, that could be true, or that's true for me. But it doesn't really matter because once information comes out, we're creators. So anything you think can be reality because we're creators and that's for good or for ill. So just keep that in mind. But I do want to share with you that if you are feeling like you're not a part of the human collective or that you're not just sharing soul energy with everybody in the 3D collective, that's because you're not. You're not meant to be a part of the 3D human collective. You're meant to be able to tap into different collectives within the multiverse and to move forward and graduate as your frequency raises. So I, I just wanted to share the message that we are meant to break the 3D collective consciousness. We are meant to know more than what we've been forced to know or told is true. And that means breaking the ego, breaking the veil, breaking the 3D consciousness that has been keeping us here as prisoners. So shine your light and your knowledge and share things with people and learn and grow spiritually and energetically. And this will all happen a lot faster than we thought. So we will be going to the 5D on the 5D train if that's where you want to be. And we're all going to be happy little creators of a beautiful heaven that we choose to create. The new heaven, the new earth, whatever the 5D, whatever you want to call it. It's our new destination. So no more brainwashing, no more people putting thoughts into our heads that don't belong there. It will only be us tapping into more and more real, real truth of the multiverse or the universes or whatever else is out there. So with that, <laughs> can't wait for the comments on this one. <laughs> Love and light, <laughs> Liz Lovegood. <laughs> <laughs>